Buckle up, do-gooders, because it's time for some PFOing so you know where you're going. All right, I did it. Two videos down. Hope you had a chance to watch them. I'm definitely starting to feel like that guy on the Progressive commercial with the chainsaws. Yo, buddy. I got this. Give me one. Yeah, not so much. Actually, I feel a little bit more like Sean Spinstar and Gus TT Showbiz. Presenting Sean Spinstar and Gus TT Showbiz. Good luck, guys. Talking away, I don't know what to say. I'll say it anyway. Slowly learn that life is okay. Wrong verse. Also, I noted in the first episode that because I'm such a rookie, I was gonna be looking at my notes, but I feel like in the second episode, I was doing a lot of this. Hopefully that's not too distracting. I'm gonna try really hard to do better. Okay, so a lot of eye contact. All right, so teeth, let's jump into it. The first episode, I spent about five years talking to you about things, including what is an orthodontist, what is orthodontics, and also what is dental facial orthopedics, among other things. In the second episode, we tried to answer the well-known question, do I or my child need braces? And now in this episode, we're going to look into the question, when should I or my child get braces? When new patients come into my office, it seems like it's a regular question or statement where they say, hey, you know what? I had braces when I was a teenager and now we've got all these kids running around with brackets and Invisalign and all sorts of things. What's going on? How do you know when a good age is to start your child in braces or orthodontic treatment? The reality is, is that there are good reasons to pursue early treatment and also to pursue treatment later. Unfortunately, there is no such thing as the perfect time to start, or at least it's not that simple. Usually there are more things that go into it than just timing of one particular thing. Actually, that's how you need to look at it. There may be appropriate times for one specific thing, but it may not be the best for another aspect of treatment. And so you and your orthodontist should come up with all the things that need to be managed and decide what timing is the best for all of those things. To help us understand that question, when should I or my child get orthodontic treatment? Let's go to the AAO, the American Association of Orthodontics. Part of their recommendation is to have your child be seen for an evaluation by an orthodontist by about age seven. Not that you can't do it before or that you can't do it after, but age seven is a decent place to start. Here are a few thoughts why age seven might be good. By age seven, some of the first adult teeth have come into position and we use those adult teeth to help us anchor or work on other teeth. In addition, by age seven, you have an opportunity because not all of the permanent teeth have erupted and because there's still so much growth to happen to identify early on if there is or are abnormal growth and development issues. For example, I have this model here. We've seen this before. It's actually not the exact same model. This one is provided by Invisalign. When you look at a normal bite, notice how the top teeth, they fit on the outside of the bottom teeth all the way around. That is normal. Sometimes abnormal development leads to a narrow top bone, right? These are the top teeth, but the bone on the inside or where the teeth rest in is narrow. And when it's narrow, that means that the top teeth might fit on the inside of the bottom teeth like that and you get a crossbite. Crossbites can cause your lower jaw to shift and that can be bad for your teeth and your jaw. Crossbites in the back is one area of development that we'd like to catch early on rather than later on. If you're making regular visits to your dentist, they can help you spot abnormal development and let you know a good time to go see your orthodontist. Although the preferred option at age seven might be no treatment at all, it still puts you in a good position to identify all of the options, all of the current conditions, and decide if any of those options are beneficial to you or your child. The caveat is, is that as we get older, we've stopped growing and our options to address some of those issues become more limited. Like I said, there's still ways to take care of them, but they may be less appealing options. Well, what can you do if you're an adult? You can still get braces or Invisalign to take care of your teeth. And because you're an adult, we're no longer waiting for permanent teeth to come in, usually, and you've already gone through puberty. That's weird. My pants shrink. I 
think I hit puberty. If you have never had orthodontic treatment before, you may find, like I said earlier, that some of those options available to young children are less available to you as an adult. And some of those options that might be required to take you to the ideal are a little bit more complex, like using bone screws, taking out teeth, or surgery. Regardless of your previous orthodontic status, there is likely a treatment option for you as an adult. You just have to be willing to venture into the unknown. Well, that's enough about teeth. Into the do good, live good segment of today's episode. Music. That's why I just sang. I actually, I, I enjoy singing. I may not be very good at it. Music is fantastic. It seems like every culture has grasped or connected with some form of music. It can be used as a means of worship. Singing can be a very joyful and effective or meaningful way to communicate important messages. Some recommendations. Take some singing lessons. That could be fun. Join your school or church choir. Sing together as a family. Having music a part of your life is a good thing. It can help you live in a good way. Well, that's all I've got. So drink it up. Just some PFOing so you know where you're going. Pack it out. <laughs>